the first brewers in the United States to start putting beer and aging it in cask, right? Yeah, we've been using barrels here at the brewery since 1994. Now you got your own. <laughs> yeah, these uh, brand new barrels really contribute to something special. Do you, uh, you know, burn them on the inside? Yeah, it's a medium toast plus. Beautiful vanilla flavor and some other things going on. And there. color too. And color, nice. I know that we're bottling some beer from a couple of casks today. Uh, so what are we doing? Uh, one of my most favorite beers, Matt. When was this one brewed? The one we're bottling was brewed in 2010. You know, barrel aging has become like a bit of the rage now. The more people are familiar with strong beer, mm -hmm. the easier it gets for me to sell mine. The cast beer is going to get this beer that's actively fermenting and putting it in a mixing tank with the two and a half year old mat so that we can carbonate in the bottles. That's the bottle conditioning process. Can we taste a little bit of this beer before it's mixed? Sure, when it has carbonation, I think it'll bring out a little more of the flavor, but you're gonna get the idea with this. Oh, 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 oh. that's ambrosia, that's candy right there. This is astounding. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? There's hundreds of barrels in here. Yes, sir. We're probably looking at about 500 or so barrels in here right now. This is what craft brewers do, okay? They do what they do best by thinking outside the glass. BB is Belgian Blonde. That's, okay. our, that's our summertime seasonal, filled in July. Mm -hmm. So let's see what Belgian Blonde does inside a French Red Barrel. Now let's throw peaches in it and see what happens. Let's throw apricots in it. None of these have been sampled yet. None of these have been sampled? I have not tried them yet. Oh, oh, oh boy. So we're in on the beginning of this sort of thing. We're at ground level here. Yeah. Um, I'd like to try that peach. Okay, let's drill it and give it a sample. All right. I'm gonna get it all in one glass and we'll split it. All right. Okay, done. We're the first ones. I like being the first. <sighs> get that wine barrel smell really it's, in it's, there. Wow. Salud. Salud. Oh. <laughs> Oh, success. Great Belgian character, you got great color, you got wonderful aroma, and peach. Yeah. But not sweet peach. It's almost got that, you know, barnyard funk that Brett carries. It does. But barnyard funk is not a bad thing. <laughs> it's a good term in the beer industry, it's a good term actually. In the beer industry. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad for an experiment. Here's going to pick up a little bit of vanilla character from the oak. Kind of rounds out the rough edges a little bit. But the beer will also pick up, obviously, the whiskey character from the whiskey. Sure. And that whiskey character in an imperial stout works really, really well together. It does together. work so, very well. All right, so we got foam. Yep, we got beer now. Nice. nice. This isn't the only cask of Yeti you have, right? You got one ready, right? Uh, well, we have, we, have some, we have one ready for you now. It's a Heaven Hill barrel, mm -hmm. and uh, the Yeti's been in here for about 11 months. So it's probably not quite ready, but I think we should try it and see how it's done. All right. Wow. That's it's not... picked up a lot of character yeah. already. That really mm. smells, I mean, you got you got lots of, uh, of the bourbon. Yep. You get a little bit of vanilla going yep. in there. Do you smell the roastiness? I do. That's the Yeti coming through. Mm. I see what you mean, that a year and a half, two years thing, but right now, it's oh. still tasting good. Yeah, it's smooth <laughs> and round, isn't it? It really is. Come back. We'll, we'll pour you another beer. All right. Cheers.